I am Doomsmince, and this is day 37 of Spawn Year. After discovering there was a pin here the whole time, as far as I can tell, the same pin Dumas Vince teased me with a couple weeks ago that allegedly never runs out of ink, and realizing all I had to do was press a button and I never would have had to drain my own blood to write with, I was a little upset. Okay, I was livid. I snapped my quill in half, I used words I don't think I've ever said before and cursed out Dumas Vince, and I didn't wait for the next day of spawn here, I tried my new pin out right away. It all felt pretty good, too. But I'm alright now. Back to day one. N no, I mean, not day one. Please, Dooms Events, poor choice of words. Don't make me start all over. I'm right where I started. Black pen, don't need a knife or band-aids. Life's about as good as can be expected for living in a graveyard for the 37th day. I'm trying to put on a brave face and count my blessings, but I'm not gonna lie and say it isn't still hard. I miss my family, maybe more today than ever, after reading McFarland's saddest, most sobering, and truest to life story yet. I haven't been moved by a Spawn comic since issue 5. I've liked other issues, but I mean really stirred emotionally. And it's interesting to me that both stories deal with adults deliberately mistreating and hurting children. This is one of the most serious subjects to deal with in fiction, and McFarland is careful not to take it lightly probably because he himself has a child. McFarlane's story here about a police officer who abuses his children as a sick coping mechanism for his own pain after the death of his wife and their mother is written with the utmost care. Like he did with the Billy Kincaid story, McFarlane transforms into a different writer here. It's not dark or shocking just for the sake of it. He creates a believable situation and a real atmosphere of terror. With all the hitmen and mob bosses and evil government agents and monsters from hell, the book has never managed to evoke a genuine gasp for me as a reader, like this one does. McFarlane takes real control of setting, and the haunting atmosphere comes from a calm, serene-looking suburban street surrounding the secret horror of a man who sadistically terrorizes his children, especially Andy, the youngest, and enjoys it as we see in the most frightening scene when you put yourself in the kid's shoes, where he picks up his gun, makes Andy believe he's going to kill him, fires but it isn't loaded, and laughs hysterically as his son lies on the floor, petrified. This father is unlikable and an extreme character, but the details make him plausible, and more than Kincaid, we can imagine that he was, at one point in his life, a happy family man who maybe just had to be careful to keep his temper in check, someone close to the great guy all the neighbors and local community think he is. The more he hurts Andy, the less human he becomes. And when Spawn steps in to teach him a lesson, we find he's too far gone, refuses to change, and might even be ready to turn his uncontrollable anger to murder, until the elder brother, Eddie, saves Andy by picking up that gun and killing their father. The issue ends with a blam, two gunshots, and zero commentary, we're left to judge the situation for ourselves. What could Eddie do but defend his brother? Would the situation have escalated this far if Spawn had left well enough alone, or did Spawn have a responsibility to help boys with his vast powers that have, until now, been used for little more than violence? I like that the father takes his children to church. He tries to give off the impression to the public that things are fine at home, but I also get the impression that being a Sunday Christian makes it easier for him to validate the abuse to himself and sleep better at night. The way this story moves right on from a panel in Angela number 3, when Spawn teleports himself back to Earth after a wound in a demon fight he said felt as bad as the day he got his powers, is neat, although I can't tell if McFarlane read any of the Angela mini beyond that panel, since the narration box says, Weakened from his battle in heaven. Spawn didn't get injured in heaven, he was in a hell cave. It's also hard to believe a little kid is dragging Spawn down the street in a little red wagon, <laughs> that should be a new song for preschoolers, when it's broad daylight and Spawn's chains are tearing up the sidewalk. Spawn is really hurt, so Andy hides him in the shed at the risk of his dad finding Spawn. 
He's acting a little differently in his weakened state, but this is the spawn I want all the time. He doesn't speak often, and when he does, he has something to say. He's compassionate and shows interest in other people's plights. Most importantly, he waits and gathers information before he finally takes actions against this abusive father. The story is more about these boys than it is about Spawn, but the series could use more one-shot stories focused on a different protagonist with Spawn involved in the shadows. He's more human here than I've ever seen him, and he's uncharacteristically mature about how he handles this. Rather than just thrashing the man, he gives him an opportunity to shape up and be a good father. Spawn manifests tattoos all over his body that read, I beat my kids, this man's very own Scarlet Letter. It's drastic, but it isn't violent, and regardless of the outcome, which I think was coming anyway, and Spawn isn't really responsible for, I respect Spawn for coming up with a way to force the man to face his monster and try to make things better. He even tells the father that he beat Wanda once and never forgave himself for it. So Spawn is able to relate to this man, and he's hard on him and won't tolerate what he's doing, but he also tries to help him. McFarlane also moves the subplots with Wanda and Terry and then Sam and Twitch forward. After meeting Spawn, Wanda can't stop thinking about how violently he tore apart those gang members. That ties directly into the theme of losing your cool and how easy it is to keep acting on that once you've done it once. And Sam and Twitch have discovered from the files they got on Chief Banks from Spawn, I'm still confused about where those came from exactly, that Banks actually hired Kincaid to kill a senator's daughter, deliberately referencing and building on the other, and quite good, story about mistreated kids. This is Capullo's best offering so far. The full-page panel of Spawn leaning down to comfort two kids getting beaten by their dad is perhaps my favorite in the series to date. Overall, this is what this series should be actually mature and adult, with serious themes and people who feel like real people. It's not crammed with internal monologue that tells us how we're supposed to feel. It just presents a narrative and lets us draw our own conclusions. McFarlane only seems to achieve this level of storytelling when it's something close to his heart. Here's hoping he manages to find that place more often, and hopefully I can be patient until it happens again. Signed, Captain Logan.